Anthony Richardson obviously is the change, the turn for the Colts. And we don't know much about him. He had two touchdown drives against the Texans. And then after that, he didn't play much. Mm -hmm. If at all, the rest of the year, I think that might have been it for Anthony Richardson. That game suffered a concussion, shoulder injury that aggravated itself. Mm -hmm. We don't know if Richardson's going to be good or not, but I, I think just going forward, comparing these two teams and the way that they approached this offseason is something that we're going to do. Because you cannot forget that the Colts won, pants the Texans week two. Mm -hmm. Shane Steichen embarrassed D'Amico Ryans. That offensive approach that the Colts had, not just with Anthony Richardson, a rookie, the first two drives, but what they had with Gardner Minshew when he came in was something that the Texans never found an answer for. Early in the year, young team, new head coach, but same thing for the Indianapolis Colts who were down to their backup quarterback who was less talented, as we saw in the regular season finale, than C.J. Stroud, mm -hmm. significantly. <laughs> less talented than, than most quarterbacks, I would say, with how inaccurate he was. And yet, the Colts almost won that last game, Saturday night. And I wonder why Jonathan Taylor was off the field for that fourth and one, where what they throw it to the running decision. back, who drops the ball. Right, I mean, it's, it's not even like it was Zach Moss. It was somebody else entirely. Yeah. I, I, I forget his name that was out there and drops a fourth and one pass. Colts get that. Who knows what happens? Who knows if they end up driving down the field, scoring a touchdown, winning the game. But these two teams are a lot closer than I think a lot of Houston Texans fans wearing the... Battle red, deep steel blue glasses would like to admit, and the Texans went super aggressive. The Colts did not. I think if the Colts had a quarterback, and we don't know that Anthony Richardson is or isn't a quarterback yet, I think the Colts' approach is generally the correct one to have. I would say it is, but my biggest counter to that is that they are at a different place in their timeline. I, now, I don't how are they at a different place? Because they've been trying to win and have success and bring in talent for years now. They just came up short. So like they brought in Matt Ryan, they brought brought in Philip Rivers. They they tried to win and add DeForest Buckner and they drafted Michael. Who they Pittman. just resigned and but they, they signed him too. But they flopped it out. You know, it flopped, right? They had to fire their coach and they ended up in position to draft Anthony Richardson. So I think the the core of their roster is in a different place than their quarterback. I, I I disagree. I think they're in the exact same spot right now, the Texans and the Colts. Because the reason why, to me, they're different is that the Texans don't have anyone that they're ready to resign yet. Like, that's where... It, that's I think that's why the approach is different. Because eventually, you're not going to see the Texans go out and sign free agents because they're going to have to pay Nico, Will Anderson, CJ, and Derek Stingley. Well, they just let Jonathan Grenard go. I mean, they did let some of their guys walk true. this offseason. So it's not like they brought everybody back. They, they are just sticking true to the two-year contract side of things. But... On top of that, being super aggressive to get to Neil Hunter, to mm. get to Nico Autry, to get Aziz Al Shire. The Colts, meanwhile, are running it back. Like most of the moves that the Colts made this offseason were re signings. You're right. They tried to make a couple of moves, but generally, I think that the teams that are patient and pragmatic in free agency are better off. They just have to get that quarterback. And, and we will see with Richardson, but. I feel pretty good about the Colts with Richardson because of how good Shane Steichen was in year one as a coach. Yeah, Anthony Richardson, he he's he's tough because you go back to college. Obviously, you know, being a Gators fan, like it's a roller coaster with Anthony Richardson. He goes from looking like he's going to win the Heisman one week to being absolutely a disaster the next week. Really, the biggest problem is he played in five games last year. He finished one of them. If he if he can't stay healthy then he has to change his style so dramatically. And and that's where I lose any faith that he would be a good quarterback in the NFL. Because I like pieces of his game, but he's he he's electric running the ball. Like that, there's no denying. You put him in open space, it's probably him and Justin Fields are probably the two most athletic quarterbacks in the NFL. I would imagine he's going to be a better quarterback than Justin Fields, though. And with Shane Steichen as his offensive coordinator... It does, you know, lend to be a very tend to be a very good thing for the Colts. I think it was I'm trying to think who it was. I think it was I think it was Lamont who brought this up when I was on the bees that Shane Steichen has pretty consistently worked D'Amico Ryan's in his career. Like if you looked at, you know, the Eagles and the 49ers when they would match up week two this season, he's had very good success. Th this is the this is the this is the uh, rivalry or the the two teams that I'm most focused in on 
I don't put Jacksonville in this category. No, I don't either. Like I am, I would be way more if if you told me the Texans do not win the division this year, I am picking the Indianapolis Colts to be that team to win the division, not the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, I'm not either. I don't take Trevor Lawrence seriously. I don't know what to make of Anthony Richardson yet, though. I I, I think Richardson's athleticism is something that should be definitely. Scary, but I, I also think the effortless way with which he can throw a football is something that's pretty interesting if he figures things out. There were a couple of moments, because I watched before um, the second game of the year, I, I remember watching Anthony Richardson's first game and really comparing him to Bryce Young and comparing C.J. Stroud to the two as well. And I thought Richardson did a lot of things in the wake of pretty difficult pressure that has to make you feel pretty good just about his ability to deliver the ball when he's under pressure. There are a couple of times where, I mean, you see him doing the things that he's doing with a guy actually on him, stepping through a defender, hitting him, and throwing a beautiful pass downfield. And Stroud is capable of doing that, but he's not going to stand tall in there. He's kind of going to let his, you know, the momentum kind of carry him. Mm-hmm. Bryce Young can't do that at all. And I, I think this is going to be something with Richardson. He's going to be, I think, one of the more difficult quarterbacks to sack in the league. So if he can be a good passer, like watch out for some Josh Allen kind of terrifying games. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, look what if you if Steichen can follow the trajectory with Anthony Richardson that he did with Jalen Hurts, probably in year three is when you really see that jump because you know last year almost doesn't count for Richardson being hurt for eighty percent of the season. So it, it is going to be fascinating just to to watch his development because so many of these running quarterbacks struggle with staying healthy. And if he can just do that with the quarterback— Off to a bad start because I, yeah. I think they didn't even have him finish the week one game as he well. Finished, I think it was one game he finished of the five that he played in or one of the four. He played all four quarters. But yeah, he got hurt versus the Vikings in week one. And it's just like, ugh, that's— And it's flukish. Tough. At this point, over time, it could be more than that. Yeah. Having Joe Flacco as the backup over Gardner Minshew, is that an upgrade? Based off of the way Flacco played last year, it might be. Obviously, Flacco had some struggles against the Texans when he had the two interceptions back-to-back, but it felt like the game just died for Cleveland at that moment in time. Yeah. I, I think that Flacco can make more throws than Gardner Minshew can. I mean, Minshew was just missing passes against the Texans. And that game, I know we all look at it and say, yeah, the Texans won. It was great. That game was so close, and they probably should have lost it. Yeah, I mean, your two biggest wins of the year last year are against backup quarterbacks. If you're going to have doubt on the Houston Texans. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, I was thinking more just towards the end of the season when the games like really, really matter. But yes, you did. But you beat Joe Burrow when healthy. Your playoff kind of game. Um, That makes sense. But then you have, you know, you play the Colts with Gardner Minshew. And you barely beat them. You worked the Cleveland Browns, but Joe Flacco was abysmal in the second half. The first half, he was moving the ball up and down the field at the beginning of the game, like it was nobody's business. And then really, and then you got smoked by the Baltimore Ravens. Like if you're going to look at the Houston Texans view, 2023 season in a negative light, that to me is what you look at. Is that in their biggest games, yes, they beat Cincinnati, but what was Joe Burrow before that? He was hurt and awful. Like he had really just started to turn around his season in that moment. And then when you had other success later in the season when it mattered most, you beat backup quarterbacks. Like it is, it's the, 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 it's not a red flag about the Texans past season, but it's your biggest question of if there, if it was last year was a fluke, you know, that might be why. And this year, what we've talked about. You play a much more challenging schedule in terms of the quarterbacks that you play. Would you expect both these teams to be playoff teams next year? The AFC is still really deep, but... One of these teams is winning the AFC South. Yep. That's all I got. Both teams making it. I think if you look at the AFC East, it does feel like the Bills and Dolphins are taking steps back. Kansas City is where they are already. Are the Chargers taking a step ahead with Jim Harbaugh? They don't have a lot of talent on that roster. I don't take the Raiders seriously. Broncos, nah. same thing. Quarterback situation there. So maybe because the AFC East and the AFC West as a whole aren't great gives you a chance. Problem is the whole AFC North is capable of finishing the year over 500. And if yeah. I'm not mistaken, they did this past season. They did, yeah. The Bengals finished in last place. So they have a last place schedule finishing 9-8. and eight. Last year, we know they're going to be better. 
Uh, who knows with Cleveland? Their Deshaun Watson led is that's just that to me is the most complicated team in the NFL at, this year is the Cleveland Browns. The talent, what they did with Joe Flacco, it all screams like Super Bowl contender because Deshaun Watson's their quarterback. But Deshaun Watson's their quarterback, and I don't know who Deshaun Watson is. I don't either. I think I might be more confident of who Anthony Richardson is than Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. Like, and then and then what is the Russell Wilson Justin Fields experiment like in Pittsburgh? Uh, That's probably, another one that I'm so curious. About. I I think that the Steelers are going to finally have a sub 500 year. But it, hey, I I feel like we've been saying that for years. Somehow they don't do it every single team at a time. Stunning, like that they and it's almost bad for them as a franchise because they can't reset at the quarterback position because they're always just right in the middle. That they have to now go after guys like Russell Wilson and Justin Fields to um to address their quarterback needs, but. It, all, all in all, th- this is going to be the most competitive part of this division, I think, going forward. And when the two times the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts play, and I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say one of those will be a primetime game this year, uh, it is going to be important. What kind of primetime? Do you think it'll be a Saturday primetime game? No, that one screams Thursday Night Football. Yeah, that's a good call. We've seen Thursday, Thursday Night Football. Monday. Yeah. We've seen a couple of Thursday night Texans Colts games. Yeah. But like Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud. If Richardson's healthy, it, it's it'll a good actually, headline. I think, be a more exciting game, too. Because that Saturday game at the end of the year, it was sort of like a, ha, these teams are cute, aren't they? Yeah. Look yeah. at the AFC South. Bless was, their hearts. A little bit of pat on the head. They're playing for a playoff spot. Look at them. Um, I would like, though, I wish I had kept a running tally of how many times during the, like, what? month almost two months of the show how many different texans games we've said oh yeah that that might be a prime time game yeah i've, I've i think I've, <laughs> we're I've, probably up to like 10 10 different games have been like oh that could be a prime time game i mean the, honestly almost every game they play could be there's going to be an argument because even when you play the bad teams it's still in theory as of next friday could be cj stroud versus jane daniels like it could be CJ Stroud versus Drake May when you play the Vikings. I'm gonna JJ go McCarthy. ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and say the Commanders Texans probably gonna be a noon, noon yeah. on Fox. I mean they're gonna play. Are they gonna play the top four? They're gonna play four rookie quarterbacks next year. Now I think it is because they're gonna play the Bears. They're gonna play the Commanders. I believe. No, I don't think they play the Commanders. They play the Bears, the Patriots, and the Vikings. And all three of those teams could have a, I mean, a new. Patriots quarterback. might trade back. So that's true. They could. We'll see. 